Hello everyone, and welcome to Drake Makes, continuing work on the Moving Meditations 3D Community Challenge. It is week three of the challenge. In the last two videos, we did some concept sketching and put together a character for the scene. But now, let's build an environment. Moving from the concept art, I wanted to create a forested scene. Within the Megascans library, I found these beautiful scans of dead trees, which led me to research references of tundras. So I decided leaves are lame, and went forward with the tundra direction. So first I need a foundation. For most of the ground, I'm using a single, massive tundra asset, which is stretched down to size. And then in the foreground, I use different ground rock assets to add some detail. I then start placing in some trees to get a feel for how that's going to look when the full forest comes in. I'm able to open up Megascan's textures and adjust their colors so that the saturation and contrast is more equal from tree to tree. Some assets out of the box were too dark for the feel of the scene, so I was able to lighten them up by desaturation so they fit in with the rest. Now I start adding in some tables around the main character. I've decided for this scene it's going to be some sort of office in the woods, as if the main character here just dragged out all the different computer parts and set up in this dying forest. I also made use of the apartment tech props once again, originally used in the Unreal 5 Matrix demo. These are some great assets, I find them really inspiring. I set up a bunch of screens around the main character here, drawing from this crude sketch. Last video we put together this character, but one thing is missing, some physics cables attached to the back of the character's head. Unreal Engine does indeed have a cable blueprint, which we can use, so I opened up the place actors window and added in one of these cables to mess around with. They're pretty intuitive to figure out. To make this work, I attached a ball to the back of the head socket of the character animation. This ball would act as a point to attach the cables to. And this worked like a charm. Once I had one cable set up, I could copy and paste them at will and create a web of wires behind the character like in the concept sketches. Cables have a bunch of different settings you can tweak, and I really didn't know what I was doing here, but I eventually settled on something that looks smooth and nice. And then here we go, I start copy pasting a Medusa head. cables in place, I then needed to fill out the forest. Because the trees make up the body of the composition for guiding the eye, I ended up hand placing most of the trees. I'm sure to constantly check back in with the main shot and sequence to make sure the composition is coming together. I was also inspired to have the headset cables strung up in the trees as opposed to hanging mysteriously from off camera. got me really inspired and excited to keep going. In order to get these cables to 
sit still in the final render though, you need to give the engine some warm-up frames, or your animation's gonna look like this, as it desperately tries to calculate the physics. Not exactly what we're going for. From here it's just a back and forth of adding detail and checking composition. I'm not ever too focused on one area at a time. Looking at the scene as a whole allows you to see where gaps are and how they can be filled without becoming too messy. All of the spheres you see me add to the scene are attachment points for the wires up in the trees. In the final render, they are invisible. Try not to have any tree be too isolated, so it's at least two or three together in little clumps around the scene. the eye is going to be drawn to shapes it can quickly recognize. So in this case, I'm trying to keep the area around the main character full of clean shapes while the edges descend into branches and chaos. I also want the geometry to be pointing towards the focal point. The physics cables are doing a lot of that work, but the tree branches are also intentionally rotated to point inwards. I scattered some discarded computer monitors in the grass around the scene. This adds some interest to the environment and raises questions about the world this character inhabits. Distant trees disappearing over the horizon, I made a massive plane and then just scattered a couple of the smaller tree assets across it. This week I also gave a little bit more attention to the main character's materials. All of this work is done in Substance Painter, and you'll have to excuse the horrible state of my UVs over there, but it gets the job done for texturing. This time around, I just added some dark spots and a little bit more detail all around. I then adjusted the angle of the skylight so things weren't so blown out and added in a new skybox, provided from the Good Sky Path that was free a few months ago. This gives you a bit more control over the look of your sky. I settled on this one. And with that concludes the work I did this week. Here is what we have so far. Stay tuned for the final render. This scene is almost done. I might mess around with some fog settings to elevate the piece and also illuminate the screens around the character. Beyond that, I plan to mess around with the transition from photorealistic to cell shaded halfway through the render to really make the piece stand out. I'm incredibly excited to share the final results and see what everyone else has done with this challenge. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.